morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Welcome to the Short Term Trading Live with Oscar. 611th video, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 611. Traders, we're going to keep them coming at you. This video is being filmed on Thursday night for trading on Friday, July 30th. Traders, as you know, these videos are geared for trading the next day, so the advice you get tonight is for trading on Friday. Traders, don't forget, futures trading is risky. It can cause substantial financial loss. Trading futures is not suitable for every trading account, and if you do not have risk capital, and risk capital is money you can lose, and lose it without wanting to hang yourself from the tree in your backyard, then it's okay to play this game, but if you cannot afford to lose money like that, please don't play this game. Futures is very dangerous. But there are a lot of cowboys out there, and for you cowboys that don't mind getting all the old Bronco, we got some trades lined up on our site. It's www.livewithoscar.com. Come on down to the site, jump into the free chat room, and allow me to help you be a better analyst and better trader. Now, what do we got on tonight's menu, traders? Indices are testing key omni averages, or I should say a key omni average. Right now, they are testing and hovering around OTAPMA. The leaders have gotten above and have started to trace back towards it. The followers have gotten up to it and can't seem to get above it. So we're at a little bit of a tricky spot. I'm going to illustrate that to you with some charts in a couple of moments. What else is on the board? It's a question, traders. The Euro and the Dow, are they truly decoupling? It's the comment question of the day, traders, and we want you to leave comments on the bottom of this video. You can click leave a comment and comment on this video. Tell us what you think. Traders, if you recall, it's got to be 10 to 15 days ago, I stepped out in front of this camera, and it was after an interesting day in the markets, in my office, on camera, with the, with the two chat rooms going, lots of people in there. I'm sitting at my desk, and I just went, wow, did you hear that sound? It was almost the crack of thunder. The Dow and the Euro are beginning to decouple. And people looked at me like I had two heads. Well, since then, I've been giving, uh, giving you videos and demonstrations that the Euro and the Dow is decoupling. Traders, if you look back for the last 10 days, 7 out of those 10 days, if Euro was green, Dow was red, and vice versa. We haven't seen that in a couple of years. So I do think that there is a decoupling taking place, and I have a chart that I'll illustrate that for you in a couple of moments. So the question is... Is the euro and the Dow and or the euro and the S&P decoupling? What is your opinion? I want a technical opinion, traders, because you know what? I don't care what you think. <laughs> I don't want to hear about what you think in your mind. I want to see what you've come up with off the chart. Show me analysis that points one way or another. Either tell me I'm wrong or show me some contradicting, or I should say, show me contradicting evidence to show me, tell me that I'm wrong or show some confirming evidence to prove that maybe I'm right. Now, I have not started trading them opposite one another yet, the Euro Dow. As of today, they really have started to show me that's the way they want to go. And tonight, I'm willing to take a play where I'd be in Euro in one direction and in the Dow in another direction. That is brave for a guy like me because I'm conservative and I've watched for almost three years the Euro and the Dow stay hand in hand. But now I think they're starting to go opposite one another. You're starting to get this. And let's see what happens. So we have some trades set up on our site. We have a red Omni in the ES and a green Omni in the Euro. Imagine that. Maybe the decoupling is starting to hold. Let's see what's going to happen with that. Traders, got some pretty charts I'd like to show you. But I see Mike getting ready to show me something. And he keeps like almost holding the flash card up. But he doesn't quite do it. So what do you got? Well, I was going to hold it up after the charts, but let's talk about the chat room and the forums. Traders, the chat room's been getting busier and busier, and I thank you so much. Am I doing all right, Mike? You're doing great. This is great. See, I'm doing great here. The chat rooms are getting busier and busier. You traders that are finding us on YouTube are figuring out that we have live chat rooms and you're showing up in there. So thank you very much for showing up in our chat rooms. If you just found me on YouTube and you see the site or you see the YouTube videos... Just go to livewithoscar.com, create a username. It takes you one minute and jump into the chat rooms. 
free of charge, traders. Come on down. Let's see what this is all about. All right, so now we're going to get into a chart segment, traders. It should be interesting because I'm going to show you a reason why you need to be short tomorrow or the S&P. And then I'm going to show you a reason why you better be short, nimble, quick, get out, and possibly watch a turnaround. Possibly. We're starting off short. We definitely have a red arrow. We're going to start the day that way. But there's a possibility, and I'll show you why in the charts, that we can find support and end up getting some buyers before the day's over. The second half of the day, I'm not calling for yet. At this point, I'm calling for downside. We'll see how Friday develops. But with no further ado, let's go look at some charts. Okay, traders, the first chart you were looking at is a chart, or I should say a set of indicators on the E-mini S&P. And you can see clearly that the E-mini S&P's indicators are pointing lower. This is the Commodity Channel Index, or better known as the CCI, clearly pointing straight down with the two averages crossing one another. Then here you have slow stochastics. You have a double-legged top, looks like an M up here, that usually will give you a larger scale drop than your average little point up like that. So you have a double-legged top, another reason why you would think the indicators are bearish in the S&P. So you've seen the indicators, there's a setup right off the bat pointing towards the downside. Now let's go look at the chart. Okay, traders, now we're looking at the actual bar chart for the E-mini S&P, the September daily bar. And there's a lot going on here, but very interesting. One of the things I'd like for you to note is that the market failed miserably two days ago at OCAPMA, or the Omni Trading Academy's proprietary moving average. Right here, it failed miserably, and we've had this drop, which we were able to capitalize on on Thursday's trading session. Not only did it fail at the, the Omni OCAPMA, as I like to call it, but if you... Take a look at this trend line right here, which hits three valid highs. You will find that the trend line also gave major resistance to the market. It came in where Otapma came in, and the market broke down below the 200 bar moving average. That's not a good sign, traders. So looking at the chart, the formation, that would absolutely be bearish and a short call for Friday. Looking at the indicators I just showed you, it coincides completely with running into resistance there, and it absolutely calls for some downward movement on Friday. So that's what we're looking for when you look at the S&P and you look at the S&P's indicators. Let's go now look at the NASDAQ. Okay, traders, NASDAQ, September daily ball, one of our leaders. You can see how well Otatma kept it in check last time up. Look what happened here. We came up to Otatma and denied passage at Otatma two days down. I think that it has another day in it, traders, and likelihood is we will start this day off on the downside, but there is a possibility that once we drop enough, if you look at this trend line here, may give you some support. So maybe after the initial drop, you may get buyers to come in, but I'm not looking for that yet. I'm looking for the downside first because of what you see here at Otatma and the indicators and what you just seen in the S&P. You definitely want to be short the NASDAQ and the S&P based on this analysis. Now I'm going to take you to analysis where we look at the leaders, and this should let you know why you must be nimble with your shorts on Friday. Okay, traders, we are now looking at the leader of U.S. indices, the Dow Jones Transportation Average. The leader got above OTAPMA, came back down and tested OTAPMA on its low of the day today, and then settled mid-range. So that tells you this, the follower may do the very same thing, come back down for just a couple of days and then rally back out of the hole. The other thing that this could be creating right here is a bull flag. There's your pole, this is absolutely a flag. So this may very well be a bull flag, which means you will only get a pullback on Friday for some portion of the day and then a turnaround. Now, of course, if we get below OTAP and keep on moving lower, then we will stay short all day and catch the whole down move. But on the onset, we're going to go short. We're going to be nimble. We're going to try to get out and see what the afternoon session has in store for us. So now you can see the reason why you can't just be gangbusters short the S&P, because the leader could be simply in pullback mode here. Let's go look at another leader. Okay, traders, the Russell 2000, another one of our leaders. 
As you can see, fell miserably at Otatma, but because it's a leader, it got up there two days ago. The S&P just touched it today. It has backed off for two days, but look where it backed off to. Right down to the 200 ball moving average. Now, if on Friday we start to come down a little, you can run into the major support and the major support of this trend line right here where buyers should come in. So you have major support right here, which we will get through tomorrow if we start to go lower, and major support here, so this whole area could find buying. Short in the beginning, watch it go down, get yourself out, and then stalk the market for the possibility of a turnaround. Now, again, I will make this clear, I am not calling for the turnaround yet. I'm calling for the downside first. We will take this one portion of the day at a time. At the onset, we're short, looking for the downside. Once we're out, we'll decide whether we need to reshort or possibly flip to the long posture. Let's see what happens. I'd like to show you one more chart now. The leader out of Europe, the FTSE. Okay, traders, the leader out of Europe, the FTSE, the Financial Times Stock Exchange or the London Stock Market. As you can see, it clearly did get above OTATMA, just as the leader of the U.S., the Dow Jones Transportation Average, did. But it came back down and tested OTAPMA today. It had a couple of days pullback. It pulled right back to this parallel channel where it intersects with OTAPMA and the 200 ball moving average. This, my friends, is a very interesting area. If, in fact, FTSE holds here and rallies out tonight, that's a great sign for you Europeans. But it is a do or die area. You break below this area, you break pretty severely, and downside comes your way. Do or die area, very interesting. Indicators call for the downside. Formation calls for some support after a little downside. The leader of the U.S. indices does agree with that scenario. Friday should prove to be an interesting day. Okay, traders, let's take a look now at something interesting, and this is the Euro versus the Dow or the ES. Let's look at that one. Okay, traders, this is the comment question of the day. It was the comment question a few days back, and it's something I brought to your attention a good 10, 12 days ago, and that is that I am noticing a decoupling between ES and Euro. What I'm seeing here is that ES is beginning a climb or an ascend, and the Euro is beginning a descend. Now, that doesn't mean that the ES is going to go up tomorrow and the Euro is going to go down. The opposite is what we're expecting in the beginning, a possible ES break, while the Euro rallies a little higher. The point is that they're beginning to go in opposite directions. We haven't seen that in over two years. Over the last 10 days, traders, you can count about seven days where if Euro was up, ES was down and vice versa. That's interesting because for the last two years, they both went up together, they both went down together, there was no way to separate them. So I believe that the decoupling that I think I have sensed and have noticed in the charts is actually starting to happen because, let's face it, this is starting to work its way this way, this one's starting to work its way that way, they're not pointing in the same direction as they were for the past two years. So there's my comment question. Do you think this is, go is going to continue? Do you think the Omni's right that there has been a decoupling? It started about 10 to 12 days ago. Or am I crazy and are these markets going in the same direction? You tell me, traders. We'd like to hear your comments. Okay, traders, last chart this evening is the Euro daily bar chart, the Euro itself, without comparing it to the ES. And you will find that the Euro is in a very nice parallel channel, has gotten above OTATMA, smartly above OTATMA, and looks to me like it wants to make its way up to the top of this channel before it cools off a little bit. That would make a nice, interesting run. So we are looking to buy the dips in Euro on Friday. Traders, that's my analysis for this evening. Please pull your own charts. Please do your own homework. Be sure to compare Euro and the ES or Euro and the Dow and make sure you comment for us. Thank you, traders. So, traders, you've seen those charts. That's my technical argument for Thursday night for trading on Friday. The ES absolutely ran into Otapma, ran into trouble. Indicator started to turn, had a pullback. We capitalized on it on Thursday. And from the work I just showed you, we're going to do the same thing on Friday, at least for the first half of the day. And then we'll sit back and see what develops. In the Euro, we're going to buy a pullback and we'll see what happens there. And this is the first time in several years I am willing to be long Euro and short S&P on the same day. You know I believe there's a decoupling taking place. Let's see what you think. 
Well, traders, that's about all I want to talk about in this video. It's Thursday night. I want to get back out there and see what's going on in the euro. Make sure you give us a call at time there tonight, 702-629-4755. And as always, keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do to help yourselves with that is say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're combing your hair, while you're in the shower, while you're doing laps in the pool. Say it while you're on the toilet, because I'm telling you this will help you. And you know what that is? Stop so Emotions are out! Always remember, futures trading is risky and can absolutely result in substantial financial loss. Traders, trading futures is not for everybody. It's not suitable for every trading account. And as always, past performance is not indicative of future results.